Welcome to Merchant Seeds Cup of Joe. On this episode, harvest has started and we have some yield reports to share. We have wheat. Call us today to take advantage of our high yielding Merchman soft red winter wheat. Big news from the EPA about further investigation on the dicamba label. Will it be pulled this year? How will that impact your farming operation for 2022? Hi, this is Joe Mershman. Welcome to Mershman Seeds Cup of Joe. Today, Ben and I are going to hold the fort down. Uh, Turk's off. So, uh, Ben, you've been in the field. Let's get that update. I know farmers are getting ready, right? Well, some of them are getting ready and some of them are actually harvesting, which is a really exciting time of year. So I kind of wanted to touch on a few of the harvest reports. Obviously, I don't hear everything, but um, we had a customer in southwest uh, Wisconsin call in this week and they've been very dry throughout the year. They've got a couple sprinkles here and there, maybe an inch, inch and a half to fill pods when, when that time was critical. But he was bragging up his uh, Neptunes, which is a 1.7 maturity and list bean that we have. And uh, he was getting 65 bushel an acre. He thought that was really promising for the year that they had and the dryness that they had. Um, so that's been a really, really nice update there. We kind of talked about the Mohawks a couple weeks ago down south that they're pulling off. Those were rolling in the 70s and 80s. Uh, that's, that's some positive experience. But right here around local, around a lot of the farmers that I deal with day to day, um, corn is coming off in the areas that had a good stand and had good nitrogen and uh, had everything that they needed. You fungicide. Know, fungicide. Yep. Fungicide is especially key this year, as we can talk about later. Um, but those guys that made sure they had extra input, uh, we're hearing numbers in the 240, 250 range on corn. Um, there's some of that over in Western Illinois. Some of that was here locally in, uh, in, in Lee County, but there are, I'm also getting yield reports from some of those areas that drown out and sometimes there's nothing farmers can do about it. And there's more variability out in those fields where, you know, it could be 140 to 200 bushel corn out there as well. So. Yeah, I've heard some 80 bushel corn too going across in spots. So um, yeah, definitely stand, uh, putting extra nitrogen because we lost so much uh, in May and fungicide is really paying big dividends this year. Yep, yep, and the fungicide portion of things, I was watching uh, Facebook last night on a couple of crop reports coming out of central Illinois. Um, what they're seeing is that that tar, tar spot's gonna be an issue for us. So we're really gonna have to figure out which fungicides have the best efficacy against tar spot because it's really defoliating that plant or putting that plant through senesce, senescence really quickly. And it's actually affecting the standability of the plant. It's affecting a little bit of the yield of the plant. So now is that time to go out and check or pay really close attention as you're harvesting of, of what the standability is of the cornfields to make sure you get those picked first and what kind of diseases you have present to figure out maybe if we need to tweak or make sure you get a fungicide application rolling into next year. So we're just getting started. I think there's gonna be a lot of crop come out in the next week and a half. We have great weather for it. Um, so those are those are all really positive things. Yeah, that's real good. And, and, and there's another piece of this puzzle too is uh, as we're talking to farmers or, you know, starting to look for their uh, gufosinate, their liberty uh, for next year. And, and they're saying that uh, it's very tight and prices are going up, it seemed like daily, um, you know, uh, particularly uh, the, the generics at this point uh, and uh, just in general, chemicals in general are tight. So that leads me to, <clears throat> if you've got some ground that's suitable for wheat, maybe think about planting wheat this fall and avoid that whole herbicide debacle uh, on some of your acres and, and hedge your bed a little bit and instead of paying double or triple for your herbicides this coming year uh, plant a little wheat because you don't need a herbicide for the most part uh, and those herbicides aren't tight if you do have a herbicide that you need uh, we you know obviously nitrogen is, a little, uh, is expensive and and uh, so is phosphate and potash but uh, wheat might be a good way to uh, uh, diversify a little bit and wheat price is still pretty good yet too Yep, the wheat price is good and the fall is going to match what we need, I think. I mean, I'm paying attention to the long rain forecast. One of the hardest parts about wheat is making sure we get it in before November to maximize our yield window. Uh, our fly free date is somewhere around October 3rd to. Yeah, it's the last week of September, first week of October. Yeah, yeah we were in Missouri when I was given yeah, that. Yeah, in that, Missouri, yes. But locally here, yeah. it's the last week of September. So we're getting real close to being able to maximize yield 
uh, based on planting wheat after the Hessian fly date, fly free date. And you know the best part, Ben? What's that? We've got a big supply of wheat. We so, do. That's right. So, we do. so in other words, uh, we actually doubled our supply this year, um, and uh, thanks to our product manager, he figured that this was going to be a big wheat year because of all these other things we talked about. But the, the bottom line is we got good supply. So, if you need wheat, even if it's you know, give us a, a day or two days' notice, we can usually get it there. Yep. So once you get that bean crop out and you say, hey, what the heck, I'll plant some wheat. So good, good hedge. And of course, you know, we're in kind of a dry spell right now. So maybe, maybe uh, you know, most droughts start in the fall. So maybe wheat makes sense this year. Right. So one of the other things I wanted to talk about is we have been getting phone calls. It's kind of this time of year where you're almost doing an autopsy, but you're not quite doing an autopsy about, well, what's this disease I have in the plant? Why is my plant dying off too soon? So one of the things, there's a couple things that I've been doing with our growers is how to take good plant samples. Um, the universities are kind of getting filled up and, and slowing down. So we want to avoid pulling plant samples uh, late on, later on in the week. You know, the Thursdays and Fridays don't seem to work as well, but if we can get them in on Monday or Tuesday, driving them in rather than, if you have the university or a testing lab close, rather than uh, trying to get them mailed to where they need to be is a pretty important factor. I've been pulling soil samples right next to the areas where they're at because it seems like the areas that are senescing too fast or dying off faster or have higher disease ratings have a tendency to have low uh, potash numbers to them. They have compaction. They, they, the, the areas are in strips. I mean, we're seeing a lot of weird things this year and I think it's how dry, the extended dry period that we've had to finish these beans off. Um, so we're seeing some weird things out in the field that I wouldn't normally expect to see. So pay attention, you know, you and I have talked a hundred times. John Rempe has taught me very well, a previous agronomist at, at Mershman Fertilizer here, be scouting the field edges, um, trying to find areas where compaction isn't an issue or organic matter is normal, where, you know, fertilizer was correctly applied, you know, try to look for patterns. If you can, if you can get up in the air and look from a drone, figure out if there's a tillage pass that matches your straight lines, if there's compaction passes, you know, all those things are important to look at because those areas that are dying off sooner probably aren't gonna yield as well plant to plant wise, just because the longer we can keep plants green, uh, extends the fill period, which in turn gives us higher yield. Yeah, there's a thousand variables we don't control. You know, the variety is just one of the variables. There's still a thousand environmental. And usually when something goes wrong, a plant dies early or whatever, it's not just one thing, it's a combination of things that, that cause that plant to die. So yeah, that's good good advice. Ben, the, the, the thing that really uh, I noticed this week really touched home for me was uh, uh, the EPA sent a very, very uh, detailed letter to Monsanto Bear uh, requesting information about the uh, dicamba off-target movement. And uh, we will post that actual letter or link to it uh, on this episode, as well as a news article that talks about it. And I, everything I'm reading, I'm reading between the lines here, Ben, and, and I think there's a very, very good possibility that post-application dicamba will not be permitted this next summer. And I think if you're a farmer, I think you need to be ready for that possibility. And uh, keep in mind also that, you know, we're talked about the glufosinate, the Liberty interline shortage or tightness in the market. Um, you know, if you're planning, planning to say, well, I'll stay with my flex beans, I can go that route. You're even getting into a tighter situation. So those are the things, and, and there's a lot of things on farmers' minds right now, and again, our job is to alert you to possibilities. Now, I'm not saying this is a, a done deal, but I'm almost willing to bet a quarter is going to happen. And you know, most of you know that a quarter is all I ever bet. So, anyhow, that's the the big thing this week uh, that is really, um, and you can read it for yourself and decide what you think. So please take some time to to educate yourself on this situation right now because. Uh, it will impact your farming operation. So that brings us to the a couple of corny jokes, and the first one's for the uh, uh, the, the grandparents and uh, parents out there uh, when you have that unruly child, you know. So, what do you call a child that refuses to take a nap, resisting arrest? 
Okay, that's, you know we're warming up here now. Don't don't get don't get out of control here. Now, Ben, you know last week uh, Ben uh, spent uh, took off a few days to for uh, a, a very notable claw a cause, and that's the <clears throat> excuse me the tri-state rodeo. So he was a cowboy last week, right, Ben? Something like that. Yeah, something. You were a cowboy. So anyhow, um, a cowboy. Um, thought he had a hundred cows okay but when he counted them he only had 97 that's because he rounded them up <laughs> ben i thought you maybe yeah okay all round, right we'll let round it up that. rounded them up yep all right we'll let you go this week again please be safe out there it's harvest time uh take your time uh be aware of your surroundings uh, i you know we don't get in a hurry. Be careful going down the road. It's, it's a dangerous time uh, for accidents and uh, you're important to us. So as always, thank you for your business. Take care.